My name's Dee Martin. I'm the sales manager for Apex Aqualung UK. We look after all the supply with regards to regulators and diving equipment for the shops in the UK. We also cover Holland from here as well. Company-wise, we supply Apex regulators for the whole of the world. The design process is all kept in-house. Everything is done here at the factory in Blackburn. We have a full team of designers, design engineers, graphic designers from concept right through to the end article. With the new XTX range, we're a lot more edgy, a bit more industrial. We want it to look technical. We didn't want a, you know, a soft finish, you know, we wanted it to be hard. We wanted to invigor the brand, make it stand out, um, which we felt we did. We buy the bar in, which makes most of the first stages that we do. When the bar comes in, it then goes into the CNC machines. It holds 10 or 12 bars at any one given time. The machine starts to do one side of the bar and then as it's finished that process, it then grips the bar, pulls the bar forward, trims the bar off, and then the back side of the machine then comes in and actually machines, while it's still got hold of it, the other side of the bar. It's just a continuous process. Any waste material that has actually come off, be it from a first stage body, be it valve spindles, whatever component part we're actually making, what will happen is that waste material will be then collected in a bin and then we will then actually sell back to the company who we buy the brass from. That will then come back as a piece of bar that will then go back to make another regulator. The next stage from after the parts actually been machined is obviously the quality side of it. We need to check parts as they come through the factory before it goes through to final process because obviously what we are producing at the end of the day is life support. We've got specific guys to look out for specific things within whether it's a thread, whether it's a, a hole or an orifice or whichever it is that needs checking. We've got machines that that will then be checked on. Now, if the guys were to find something, because we keep everything in house, we can react to it very, very quickly. Once everything's been checked out and everything's okay, it will then be sent to be cleaned and polished. The main reason for the chroming side of it is, is aesthetics. The reason why we chrome it, obviously, it's, it, it, it keeps the looks of the regulator. This is where the magic happens. It literally looks like jewellery when you go down there and it's raw brass at, at this stage. Once it starts going through the actual process, it literally changes colour in front of your eyes. So it'll go through, start off obviously as raw brass, it'll go then go into one, one, one of the dips, it'll come out and it'll be green, it'll go into the next one, it'll come out and it'll be gold, it'll go into the next one, it'll be brown, go into the next one, it'll come out and it's bright silver, then it comes out the next one, it's, it's obviously it's been cleaned, it's nice, it's gleaming. It's pure alchemy how it does it, it's, it's amazing. After the chroming process, we then go on to the injection moulding. All the moulding's done in-house. It starts off as a, like a plastic chip that goes into a big hopper, then becomes molten material that's squirted into the actual mould itself. Once the machine actually makes that specific part, it then ejects the mould, it's cooled down within the mould before it ejects it, and the part comes out, you know, formed, ready to go. The next process we have to do is obviously we make the hoses. All the crimping and everything with regards to the ends of the hoses, we do it in-house. Not everybody likes the, the same hose, be it on their BCD, be it on a regulator. We've now made all the component parts as we now need to assemble them. It's a little bit more hands-on because it's obviously you're then dealing with the actual plastics side of the component parts. The people that are involved within that side of the business, obviously, again, it's life support equipment that we're making, so there's no second chances. So that each one is actually tested, so we know everyone is set precisely to what we want with regards to the interstage pressure. So everyone will leave the factory identical exactly the same. Cam's the one who basically flies the answer machine, so to speak, so any regs that we have that we want tested, there's parameters that they have to adhere to, be it temperature of the water, be it flow rates, 
we can put a regulator, whichever it is, we can preset the machine to dive at a specific depth. We can preset the water to be at a specific temperature. We can set the breathing rate, um, say of a panic diver or someone's diving at depth, or we can even down to, we can change gas that they're breathing. The next thing we have to do is obviously package the regulator up and then ship it out to the dealer or international client that the regs are actually going out to. Each regulator gets its own serial number. The first stage will have a serial number and the second stage will have a serial number. When it is actually put in a specific box, that box will actually have stamped on the outside of it each part that is actually in the box. So we know where each regulator goes. With regards to a customer who goes out and purchases Apex Regulator, I want them to have that full and excitement. They've got to get it wet. I want them to feel the same way that I still feel every time I open a box of regulators. Why should we only be diving X amount of months of the year? You can dive 12 months of the year. That's what we test them for. We always go above and beyond what we need to do just to make sure that our regulators will perform. It's life support equipment. It's got to work first time, every time. We've got a premium product. Everything is made in-house by people in Blackburn, in the UK. There's not very many companies can actually say that. We're still always going to be that little kid in the background that wants the fun, wants the adventure. Be it for photography, be it for technical diving, be it for diving on wrecks, be it different temperatures, be it warm water diving, cold water diving. It's just, there's so many choices that you can do for different types of diving. It's just one of those things, if it grabs you and it hooks you, you've, you've got it for life. <laughs>